welcome back to my channel. It is a new year, which means new goals. Today we are going to discuss simplifying our routine. If you are anything like me, you probably have a lot of responsibilities, but I'm here today to tell you guys that having a busy schedule doesn't mean that you have to be overcommitted or your schedule has to be overcomplicated. So today I'm going to walk you through some tips to simplify your routine. I'm also gonna share with you guys my favorite planner, why it's my favorite planner, how I use it to simplify my day-to-day -day schedule, and be sure to visit the website, which I will link down below in the description box, where I have done a full breakdown of this planner, what I love about it, everything that you need to know. Let's jump right into tip number one to simplifying your routine in 2018. So story time, last year while I was trying to get my health back on track and I was switching to a different lifestyle, eating a gluten-free diet, I was making such big changes in my life and having so many like little battles with my health, but yet I did not slow down one bit with my responsibilities. Eventually I realized that trying to keep up with the Joneses wasn't healthy for me and it also made me unreliable to the people that were expecting things of me. So I decided that I need to take some time and really establish what my priorities are in life and get rid of all the excess, AKA don't overcommit. So two examples that I can think of right off the top of my head, with my kids' school, I was very involved, like overly involved. I'm still involved. I like to be part of their education and part of their program, but there was a time when I was attending every single parent advisory, advisory committee event. I was going all out. I was sitting in the office speaking with the principal, and eventually I realized I can help the school and be there as a support system and to help raise money without being involved in every single aspect of the committee. Another example, recently I was actually asked to speak on minimalism at a group that I attend and while I wanted to say yes, get out of your comfort zone, speak on it, speak about something that you are passionate about, I decided that it is not something that I enjoy. I do not like to be the center of attention. I do not like to have all eyes on me. And at the end of the day, I would be planning and prepping and I just didn't want that stress. I didn't want that time commitment. So I politely turned it down. For me personally, this means using a planner. I like pen to paper. I also use different methods, but my go-to method is that pen to paper planner. For you, this might mean using your Google app on your iPhone or using a whiteboard or using a planner or using just a regular paper, a piece of paper and writing down notes. You have to decide what works for you, what works for your family, and what makes you more able to communicate to everyone around you what you have going on and when and why you are available or not available. There are probably a million different methods for planning your life. Some people plan day to day, some people plan weekly. I recommend doing all of the above. What I do personally is I plan out my month first. That way I can always look at the big picture first and I can look throughout the year. So what I do is I first go into my planner and I write anything that I have going on that month. That includes birthdays, anniversaries, date nights, sports, everything like that goes in the monthly view so I can always see an overview of my schedule. The planner that I use currently does not have a weekly section, but what I do is I plan my daily activities and on Sunday night, I look at my week as a whole. So I start writing in what meals I'm gonna eat throughout the week. And then I go in daily and I time block my day. If you are somebody that is extremely busy, time blocking is going to be the most amazing method for you. I literally write everything that I have going on from the start of waking up in the morning to doing laundry, to making the kids lunch, to dropping them off at school, to going to the gym, to coming home and filming a video. I time block every single hour of my day so there is no question what I need to be doing throughout the day. With my planner, there is also a to-do list section. So on that section, I write anything that needs to get done during that day. So maybe on the time block, I'm a little more vague, like answer emails. And then on the to-do list, I might write contact this company about this collaboration. So it goes from being kind of more of an overview to more of a very specific thing that I have to, that I have to do by the end of the day. A planning method is going to be completely useless unless you are looking at it every single day, using it every single day. 
What I recommend doing is sitting down every single night and going over the following day, writing down anything that needs to get done, writing down your meals. Then when you wake up that following day, I recommend looking at the planner again. That way you are, it's fresh in your mind what you need to accomplish and there is no confusion about what needs to get done in the day. Now, personally, I bring my planner everywhere I go because I want to know at all times what is on my schedule. That way nothing is ever missed. It gets in my planner as soon as possible and it's there and ready to be used and I don't have to remember it, keep it in here. It's all down on pen and paper. I know that I am of the unpopular minority who loves a Monday, but I love the feeling of starting a week fresh. So what I do is I use Sunday night to plan my entire week. So on Sunday in my planner, you have a section for reflection, you have a to-do list, and you have just your basic like what needs to get done or what's going on that day. I personally use Sunday to go through the week and write down what meals we are eating every single night of the week. And next to the meal, I will actually write the page number if it is from a cookbook so that that way, while I'm scanning for that recipe, it's as quick as can be, it's efficient, it's simplified, I know exactly where I need to go when it's time to cook. If I only need a few ingredients throughout the week, I will use the notes section and write in whatever ingredients that I need. If it's more involved and I need more um, ingredients, I will actually write it down on a piece of paper and then slip that paper in the front cover, the front pocket of my planner so that that is always with me on my planner and I can take it right to the store. On Sunday, I also take the time to freshen up the house. So I will walk around with a laundry basket, pick up anything that is not where it's supposed to be, put it in the basket and then distribute it to the appropriate areas in the home. And that is when, when my house is clean and fresh and I can think, Properly, I will sit down with my planner and go over my following week. And then I will also take that time to just do something special for me. I make sure that Sunday is the day that I really pamper myself and take care of me. Regardless of how busy you are or how much free time you have, if you are not taking care of yourself, none of it will matter. For me in 2018, I made it a point to really get rid of any stressors in my life and just oversimplify everything because I need that for me. Everything else in life, everyone else in life can wait because if you are not at your best, it will show through everything that you do and you will never be happy in the long run. I hope this video has helped you to simplify your routine. Remember that if you visit the website linked down below, I will have photos breaking down the entire planner, what it has to offer, how I use it, what I like about it, maybe what I don't like about it. Be sure to check that out. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know what kind of videos you would like to see in 2018. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.